Uh, welcome to my talk. Thanks all for coming. Um, my talk will be about extending the performance analysis tool set. So I will be talking about tools that you can use in your Linux environment in order to find out performance bugs um, in different ways. So this is about performance and this is about embedded performance because it's on an embedded conference. And when it comes to embedded performance, it's really important to understand that when you're coming from a desktop world, your performance will look differently. The time inside your embedded system will be spent differently. Maybe let's have a show of hands. Who had that situation of, uh, of thinking, well, I know this is probably something with the I.O. and in the end, uh, the performance bug was, was somewhere else totally. Okay. I see some hands. So on embedded, we cannot really rely on our intuition. We need to be scientific and we need to measure and then we can decide and improve things. Okay, here's the outline of the talk. Okay, first I will talk a little bit about how to get sampling performance information on an embedded device with perf and how to get the symbols in and so on, debug symbols. In the second part, I will show you Hotspot, a tool that we developed. I already have the t-shirt on, it's quite cold, but still okay, I show you Hotspot. Um, and um, I will demo this for you, and we will go through several examples, like how like, performance defects can look like in this tool Hotspot, how you spot them, and maybe also how you fix them. And in the third part, I have to do a little bit of a disclaimer here, I'm coming from the QT world, um, I will talk about how we at KDAP introduced LTTNG tracing, not sampling, but tracing uh, to the Qt libraries in order to um, enhance the experience you have when debugging performance issues. Okay. So, but first talk about Linux perf, let's talk about embedded. So what you usually will have um, when, when you want to have perf information, so sampling information, uh, you need to have your perf running on your system. Um, oftentimes that's a performance, uh, performance issue, sometimes it's a security issue, oftentimes your managers say, nah, let's don't have perf on our real images. So I really suggest you to have a production image and a development image, and the development image should at least have all these flags set in the kernel. So, these flags really determine whether you can do useful tracing uh, with your perf. So the first is, do we have perf at all? The second is, can we do dwarf unwinding, which becomes important in some time? And then, do we have trace points, which we can use, for example, to trace the scheduler to find out issues with uh, locks and so on. Okay. So when you have an embedded system, make sure you have an image that at least has something like this because otherwise you cannot measure on your embedded system. If you measure on your desktop, you, would, you will not find the issue. Second point, it's really, really, really important to have debug symbols, but build on release. Um, maybe you know this, this trick here, this code. This code cal calculates the sum of integers beginning from zero, ending at a certain integer that you want, and you compile it with and without the minus O2. What will happen? Anyone knows the answer? Okay, maybe I will spoil a bit here. Uh, so without O2, you will get a for loop, normal loop. You will, can look at the assembler, will be a normal loop. But um, there's a, uh, a really smart guy called Gauss who found a formula for this. And when you pass the minus O2, the formula will be applied, so we are, you will have that n times n minus one uh, and half of that as the result of this. That means, in, in some ways, it will be infinitely faster when you have the minus O2. So always be sure to have a profile build. So uh, in your um, build systems, uh, there is this um, rel with debug info, for example. Please make sure that you have this, because otherwise you're not measuring anything that is uh, relevant to um, to performance, because on your release systems you will have release builds, and uh, for this, please have O2, but with debug symbols first. Okay, second problem. We have 
no space on our uh, embedded systems. So usually you have something like these user space libraries. Again, I'm coming from the Qt world, libqt5 core, and libqt5 core stripped is five megabytes, which is big for embedded systems, but it's okay. But if you have the debug symbols inside, then it's really big. So you cannot really have it inside. So what will you have instead? You will have separate dwarf debug info inside your build system. I think Yocto does it by default. So inside your SDK, you will find your debug symbols, which are just uh, ELF objects that are separated uh, onto your host uh, system. But on the target, you just have your libraries that are stripped. Okay. Another problem, now that we have um, debug infos on the host, but actually we're measuring on the uh, target system, um, we have an architecture mismatch. So what we need to do is we need to unwind um, uh, the measurement, like stack pointer measurements that we did on the, um, uh, on the target system. We need to unwind on the host system, so on our desktop system. Okay. That's not always easy to do. Okay, and then we have Linux Perl for itself, and there we also need to look whether we can do low uh, overhead measurements uh, using our performance measurement unit inside our CPU. Uh, to see whether you have a performance measurement unit, just scroll through D message and look whether you have that PMU entry somewhere. On Intel you will find it. Uh, on, on some ARM CPUs only core zero is counted, uh, ARM does not specify that this uh, PMU has to be inside the CPU, so it can be no PMU at all. Sometimes it just gives you bogus values. So please find out if you have a PMU and if Perf can actually measure uh, things like cycles on, uh, on your CPU. Okay. But then we can go ahead and get our debug info from our device just with this call here. We do perf record because we know now perf is working on our device and we do minus minus call graph. We want to have the stack information and then we just uh, close the parameters here for perf and then we start our app with our parameters, uh, parameters that, we want to, uh, that we want to see and just measure there. Okay. Now we have our prof uh, profiling information and now we need to process it. And as I said before, when we do unwinding on a device, we can use perf. There is a perf report, which is kind of this command line uh, interface, looks like this. I don't really see any information in this. It's weird, right? Here the numbers do not really add up to 100%. Um, yeah, what, like my biggest problem is apparently in libc. It's unclear what's happening there. You can actually expand these. You can look inside what is actually happening inside my libc and like where is it coming from. But uh, qEventLoopExec does not really tell me a lot here. This is why we build Hotspot. <laughs> Hotspot is a free and open source software Linux UI for visualizing your perf results. Um, there's already UIs for visualizing or like Approaches for visualizing perf results, for example, from Brandon Gregg, who's really great uh, on this topic. So really check out his webpage when you want to learn about perf and Linux performance in general. Um, but we uh, wrote a, a tool that can do a bit more. I will show in a short time uh, in a demo. Uh, internally, it uses perf parser, uh, which comes from the Qt creator guys and which in turn uses libunwind or libdw for unwinding uh, even of architecture. And this is the important part here. Um, before I come to the demo, I just want to give a big shout out to uh, Milian Wolf, who cannot be here today, but he is the core maintainer and um, he, like all courtesy goes to him. <laughs> okay, let's, um, let's see a bit how this hotspot looks like. Um, I have a perf, uh, I have a simple application here. Uh, it's just called example one. I show you example one. It's one of these nice Mandelbrot examples. That's, that's plain, you maybe know it from university. Um, but the problem here is that it's a bit slow. So if I like scale it a bit big, bigger, you see uh, it's slow, it even lags, it takes some time before I uh, get there. Now I want to find out what is really slow inside here, okay? So 
we heard that we just go there and uh, write perf record dash dash call minus graph dwarf. So we're using the, the dwarf information for unwinding or like for recording and later for unwinding. And then I go ahead and do x1 um, source and lab Mandelbrot. Um, I will pass an argument to this. I would say minus b10, which means repeat the drawing 10 times. You won't see anything on the screen, but believe me, it's actually calculating the thing 10 times. Okay, we do this. And what uh, falls out of it in a few seconds is this perf.data. Here you see maybe another problem that you get. The perf.data is quite big but you can set the, um, uh, the frequency in which uh, it actually records the data so you can shrink it down and like play around a little bit so you find that sweet spot of the maybe 10 megabytes you have left on your device. Or maybe just, yeah. Um, and then uh, if I look inside here, we have this perf.data information now recorded. And now I can start hotspot, and by default it will read the perf.data out of this file here. Okay, starts. And the first thing I see here, um, is, it, is it too small? Please interrupt me if it's totally too small. It's okay? All right. Um, first I see what was uh, recorded here actually, the total runtime, we are at five seconds. That's gonna be important later because we can improve this thing. Um, and then we will see our hotspots, uh, high pot finite. And there is also a draw Mandelbrot. And there's also a multiplication of a complex double version three that is important here. Um, this is something uh, that is already telling us something about um, where our hotspot or where our problems might, might be. But uh, something that is really useful and really widely known uh, in the field now is this um, flame graph. And I will explain the flame graph um, really short, just um, um, everything you see here um, is actually the stack um, in going up direction. And going left to right is the cost of the um, functions that were called on a stack, okay? So I see inside my start, I have my libc start main, inside I have my main, inside I have my draw mandelbrot, inside I have my standard absolute from a, from a complex double, and then I come to my high pod, high pod finite, and so on. Um, so what we can see here, is um, we can even inspect and go inside, like just click on main. Now main becomes the new 100%. We can go inside and inspect that further. We will see that in other examples later on. What we can do with hotspot also, which uh, you cannot really do with the just scripts that are outside uh, there, which also produce these um, flame graphs for you, is you can uh, select individual um, filters, like filter for time. For example, you might be interested in your startup time. Maybe your startup time is your problem. You want to look what is going on in my startup time here. So I filter on here, and what I see here is, okay, I'm actually in the loader. There's lots of DL open and stuff going on, and there's actually no Mandelbrot at all uh, in my startup time here. Okay. Um, I can also, uh, okay, reset the filter again. Oh, reset. Zoom and filter. And then I go, um, I go back in this. In this time frame, and in this time frame, I should have nothing, uh, not these DL opens and this stuff, but I should have my start main and so on and my Mandelbrot, which is actually my cost. Okay, I filter in on selection. You can see you can also filter in on individual threads and so on. Okay, we go here. Did I just, just zoom? I don't know. And um, I can also go here and ask, okay, this hmm, draw Mandelbrot, let's go to another view, which is the caller Kali. Uh, mode, uh, where I can see, okay, who was calling me as my function, as function, like draw Mandelbrot, okay, I was called mostly by main. Um, inside, I, I was calling this uh, standard apps of this complex double and so on. And uh, here I have locations where actually the costs are uh, happening. So actually in uh, um, Hotspot, you can go here and say open an editor. Then, after some time, editor will open up. 
And we just saw it's in line 40. We see, OK, here in line 40, here's my standard apps of my complex, which is actually uh, like giving me headaches, which is actually giving me problems here. Um, small spoiler for solutions, complex numbers. I'm calculating the absolutum of a complex number here. So solution to make this faster here, for example, uh, would be um, uh, this is kind of a Pythagoras uh, calculation. It's kind of a square root of real, real squared plus imaginary squared. But why have the square root? And why not put a 4 here and don't take the square root? Okay. So I just would uh, replace this with kind of a fast norm uh, that still would be the squared norm instead of the norm that has the, um, that has it, um, the uh, square root inside. I'm not doing it. Right now, uh, I'm just uh, telling this to you. Another piece would be um, line 42. We have a, another problem here. Open it again. Go there and on line 42. It's actually wrong. It would be on line 45. It's, it's a bit complicated sometimes with these uh, stack traces. They're sometimes off. Uh, you would see that actually this uh, mul DC, like this complex double uh, multiplication, here is actually slow. And there's another trick. When you uh, multiply by yourself, you can also be faster uh, with a complex number. Just a simple example um, of how you could find um, problems inside your code. Um, just looking back at the flame graph, just there is a simple look you can have at the flame graph and tell if there is a problem and which kinds of problem is there. This is kind of the one big problem problem, which is the good problem. So if you have one big problem, you uh, might be uh, easy on finding this. Um, another problem is the death by a thousand cuts, where you pay and pay and pay, but you pay really small amounts everywhere, distributed over your whole call stack. And we will see this um, in, in other implementations. Um, so I, I just show you the, um, uh, I have a, so a solution for this. And I also show you um, what Hotspot, Hotspot shows you for the solution here. Hotspot, so I just replace this in the code. And I go to example number two. Um, and I have perf data here. And. Uh, when I look at the summary, we had five seconds before. It now ran for the same, even with 15. It uh, only ran for 1.4 seconds, so it became faster. And if we look at the flame graphs, there are still these plateaus. But now I know about these plateaus. Yes, they're optimal, or they're nearer to what I want to have in terms of performance. Okay. And now we can also see some parts of the flame graph that are actually becoming uh, more like the usual flame graph, which I will show you in the next example. Example three, with data, I just have hotspot. Okay. Um, here is an um, application called Settings. And uh, this application already has some, uh, some problems with the unwinding. It doesn't really find the symbols. Because now I have libraries. Maybe you see that in the binaries here. I'm inside my graphics driver. I'm inside libpng. I'm inside libz. Uh, I'm inside Qt, which didn't have uh, uh, information at this point. Uh, let's see whether we can still find something out here. OK. This is how the flame graph looks right now. So this is how um, a usual flame graph, I would say, when we go to a customer, something is slow, we don't have all the information would look like. You have like mixed, you have symbols, and mixed, you have no information at all, and you need to uh, find your way uh, inside, this, um, inside these mountains. But what you can see is that the flame graph uh, looks a bit more like the, like the sane flame graph, which is like lots of small peaks. So if you have lots of small peaks, you can be assured you don't have the big problem problem, but you have maybe just many small problems problem. Um, yeah. So um, here, uh, we can also turn this flame graph around. We can go to bottom up view and see, OK, let's suppose we are on the top of our stack. Where was I? And where was I coming from when I was at the top of my stack? So here I see all the calls 
that ended up in my graphics driver. This is during rendering. And here I see uh, two, uh, two paths that come from various parts of the code that were loading PNGs, that were inflating the PNGs. So maybe this was the problem in this case, which actually was the problem in this case. So I go there and look, is there anything like big PNGs that I could replace, something that I could, um, that I could maybe preload during boot uh, or something like that, which I could improve in order to um, uh, improve the startup performance of this application, for example. Okay. Um, if there's any questions, please interrupt me. There's bonus points for interrupting me with questions. Uh, let's go to our last example uh, about hotspot here. You see unwinding happens now. Uh, takes a long time and sometimes you're really spending like a minute or two minutes unwinding your information because sometimes you just have lots of stack information that you need to retrieve. I mean, this is megabytes or hundreds of megabytes of data. Okay, and this is something that I would call a, kind of a healthy flame graph. It's a bit complicated to see. Maybe I can make it like this. So if you see a flame graph that looks like this, and uh, you would think, okay, maybe it's, uh, it's healthy, let's turn it around, maybe see whether we have lots of small stuff on top of our uh, graph. Okay, maybe here's something in font config, font loading, maybe I need to look at this. But other than that, I'm quite happy with my flame graph, and I'm quite um, okay that I, like, at least with hotspot, I cannot find any other um, um, performance issues really fast. So just with this one look on this flame graph. Um, all right, here the font config, we could fix the font configs. Other than this, we have like small parts on top uh, or on the bottom with bottom up or uh, like these many small peaks, uh, which indicate that there isn't that one big problem and um, also not that distributed problem because it would show up in the bottom up view. All right. So again, about hotspot, there is one thing I like the most when I go to a customer and we have an embedded um, system and um, I, I get some information from there, I can unwind off target. Um, you can uh, provide hotspot with all kinds of um, hints where to look for extra information for this unwinding as to get more uh, and better looking flame graphs and flame graphs that, that don't have that uh, question marks inside. So you can provide your debug paths where is your split debug information? I just recently learned that there is also an elf utils unstrip. So if you have some debug information that you want to just put in a, a strip library, you can also do that on target. Maybe you have uh, space for this. Maybe just if you have an, um, a bug happening and just the top of your stack is unknown, maybe you want to find out, okay, just these last frames, what is happening, what is going on there. Just take your debug information, unstrip it on the device and have debug information just in your last frames. Um, then you can provide extra lib paths. Uh, so this is something when you have uh, libs that you're developing on your own and they're maybe not inside the SDK. Then the application path, uh, which uh, Hotspot needs to look as well. And then uh, the uh, sys root, which is just, uh, yeah, just SDK sys root. And which is also important is the kernel symbols, which you can get out of the proc file system uh, inside your um, embedded system. So after you've done your performance measurement, just uh, take all your um, k all sims from proc k all sims, get them into a file, and also put them on your device for later unwinding so you can see even uh, kernel information. So see, you see, okay, some kernel worker or something like that was actually slow there. Okay. Um, that's it for Hotspot. Again, please go to GitHub, uh, download Hotspot, try it out. Um, it's it's free, please contribute to Hotspot also. We recently fixed a big issue with unwinding, so also for uh, newer, um, newer uh, compilers, it should be um, working a bit more stable now. Okay, 
Now about the second part I want to talk about, which is uh, LTTNG, Linux Tracing Tools, next generations, nothing that we invented. Uh, it comes from the, I think, uh, Fishy OS and uh, Ericsson site. And it's a great source of information for tracing. So tracing information about your kernel um, that you can get there. Problem is, it's only for the kernel. So it's not really a lots of user space libraries that are actually existing that where you can uh, look at the same time what is happening in my user space application and what is then happening in my kernel at the same time. And we want to change this. So this is just backup sites. I can also show you um, a tool which we also did not develop here. Uh, it's called um, Trace Compass. And with Trace Compass, you can see, like, uh, inspect your uh, traces a bit better. So now we are talking about a different kind of performance analysis, right? Before we had this kind of uh, collection uh, of uh, how many times was I in this function, like everything was summed up, but now I have detailed information with timestamp. We can see that when I start Trace Compass. Trace Compass, okay, it's a kind of an eclipse program, it's also open source. And um, Trace Compass allows you to visualize um, the so-called CTF information, which is a common tracing format, which uh, um, I think um, not only LTTNG, but also other uh, tracing tools support. So what you can do here and what uh, like surprises me most all the time is you can zoom in kind of infinitely into your running system. So you can go here and say, OK, I want to know what is happening here. And you can go here and you say, OK, here's an epoll wait. And you can go further here. Like, this is my xorg. The red part means, OK, I'm waiting for some things. Actually, um, yeah, wait for CPU. And here I can like step through all the uh, syscalls that are happening inside uh, the kernel. Partly I see all the kernel workers, for example. Is this the small, maybe? Should I increase the size? Still OK? OK. And um, here I have an exact listing of what's, what's going on here, like this epoll wait. I don't just have the information that there is an epoll wait. Uh, or like, OK, here is the get switch, like, uh, because I was waiting before. I'm not waiting anymore. First, I get the event about the scheduler that I was now switched on. And I could see uh, fr from, from which process I was switched. I think this is the idle process here. And yeah, you can, you can see all kinds of information here, which is what is going on in your kernel. Um, and um, it's just too bad that you cannot have a user space tracing here up until now because LTTNG also supports user space tracing. And it's also um, kind of a low level thing to have inside your application. Um, so um, it's not only um, like um, it's low overhead, I'm sorry. Um, so why is it low overhead? Because you can have it outside and it's actually using a fast buffer either inside the kernel or inside um, your user space to, uh, to store all this information. So there are several ways of having um, trace point providers. I t tell you a bit more about this in a second. Uh, inside your application, so either you compile it in on compile time or on a kind of on uh, start, on runtime, you can LD preload it inside your application, or even inside on runtime during the application, you can um, DL open the TP provider, the trace point provider, and have the information uh, also in as, uh, in as well. So uh, if you don't have the TP provider in, usually the trace points cost you nothing, but if you have them in, they cost you a little bit just putting this information inside a buffer. Okay, so what would we do uh, what did we do in Qt? Um, in Qt, we added a tool called TraceGen, which is kind of a code generation, uh, generating tool, um, which adds these um, trace points to interesting points inside the uh, Qt library. For example, here uh, we had this uh, PNG loading, which was slow. So here I have this QImage reader read before reading and read after reading, so it can measure, okay, uh, exactly which image was slow, what 
what maybe can I improve? Maybe I can talk to my designers and stuff like that. Um, so here's all the information, the, uh, all the trace points that we have. And trace, point, uh, trace gen goes um, ahead and uh, creates this, um, creates these um, um, functions. Um, it's actually macros, but it creates these functions, uh, which you can then compile to this object files, trace points, which you can then uh, use inside your application. Okay. So um, here it's uh, for this image reader. You might ask yourself what is the difference between trace point and do trace point. It's just one asks if it's enabled, the other one does it anyways. So it, if it knows um, trace points are enabled. And the third one is just do I have the trace point? Okay. And here is how it looks like inside Qt. Uh, I have this macro Qt trace and I have this Q image reader read before reading. Uh, and I also pass arguments like the file name. Um, and uh, with this information, I can now go ahead back to my trace compass and see that I don't only have um, uh, kernel information, but if I go and filter for my application, which was called chip here, maybe uncheck all and then just check chip, user space tracing. And everything else you want to check, maybe some kernel information and so on. Then we can see here that uh, we have some information about the kernel, uh, like this mprotect information. But additionally to this, we should have some user space information as well. Right. Okay, it's just a startup. Yeah, it's just so many things that are going on here. Ah, here you can see, for example, user space tracing, Qt core, Qmeta object, active and signal. So some signal was just processed inside Qt. Um, we know that it's still, we still should improve upon this, like sender is just given you with an address, there should be a class name, something like, ah, there was this class sending me something, and then I waited for ages in the kernel. Uh, but um, yeah, this is the start that we are providing uh, for LTTNG coming inside Qt. And uh, with these trace points that we're introducing with this trace gen code generator, we're not just having LTTNG information, which you can use on Linux, but also ETW information, which you can use on Windows with this uh, nice UI for ETW for performance analysis that looks like this, um, like a mix of hotspot and this um, trace compass, which I just showed you, uh, but on Windows. So if you're on Windows, you can also uh, look inside this. Okay. As in 5.12, you have this, what I just show, uh, shown to you, inside Qt. So um, even if you have a, like a lower Qt version, if you're able to run it with Qt 5.12, just try it out and uh, please give us feedback on how you want more uh, tra uh, trace points and which trace points you really want to have inside Qt. Okay. To summarize, how is LTTNG also different from Perf? Um, first, I showed you perf and hotspot, and I showed you how um, sampling uh, kind of is a stopwatch next to your CPU, stopping your CPU from time to time and writing down where you are in the stack trace. And then you can see where you are, like where you were most of the time when the uh, stopwatch was taken. And um, trace points, you can have a trace point file. Uh, edit this, add this to your code, and then have detailed information about your trace points uh, with LTTNG and inspect these events up to the nanosecond um, inside your uh, application. Okay, and that's all. I want to thank you for your attention, and maybe we can have a small discussion uh, on performance issues you had and maybe how you solved them, or if there's any question, feel free to come to the microphones here in the front. Thanks. Okay.
Sounds really nice uh, feature. My question is uh, on the other side of the boundary because I'm kernel developer. Uh, could I use uh, that for debugging C programs? Is there a plugin for tracing points within C program? Yeah, there's um, there's user space tools for LTTNG for uh, C programs. Just go to the LTTNG.org webpage. They have really great information on this. Um, and they tell you how to add simple trace F, which is kind of a print F that goes inside this uh, tracing information, or um, um, how to add real trace points, which you can see as these bars, um, which I've just shown you. So ltgng.org, I just look, look for user space uh, uh, C, and then you will see how to get the user space tracing also for C. It's just uh, uh, how to get this information, how to like get it inside. Okay, and one more question. Uh, is uh, perf the only uh, uh, backend infrastructure used uh, to trace uh, the kernel? Calls? No, 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 no. There, uh, not at all. Yeah, good question. Good question. Uh, for example, I think tomorrow, um, a few hours earlier, at ex in exactly this room, there will be a talk about eBPF, which is now like the rising star in the world of performance analysis. So people go write e small eBPF programs or BB BPF programs, put them into the kernel, uh, and collect information there. Um, um, to, for example, um, find out their I.O. issues or something like that. So count stuff every time something happens in the kernel, just count stuff or selectively filter for certain events uh, using these small BPF programs. So also this um, read up on uh, Brandon Gregg's webpage, he's talking uh, a lot about eBPF and BPF in uh, recent times. And of course, there's other sources of information. I think. Um, like um, all these old uh, F-trace and so on, they obvi obviously still work and are a great source of information. I just wanted to show you uh, LTGNG and Perf as two examples of this. Great that you again <laughs> told me that there's actually more and please go ahead and look at everything there is. Yeah, that sounds really great feature. Okay. Um, are there another, uh, other questions? Um, if not, then thanks again and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference.